All right, hello, hello everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is an exciting session we have here. So, um, I'm Samir Verma. I'm a professor of information systems at San Francisco State. Uh, uh, you may know we have a campus a little to the southwest of here, the main campus, uh, and this is our other campus, the downtown campus, where we have the graduate program. Uh, and you can see sometimes it's a challenge when we teach in this room because they want to look at the mall and see what's happening there. Um, so it's, it's, it's an interesting place, but uh, it, it works well for us. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick background on what we're doing here and how this came about, and then we'll move on to the session. So um, we put together a thing called the Commons Initiative on campus. And the idea here was um, a lot of places on campus do different projects that surround the idea of Commons. Uh, it could be free and open source software, it could be Creative Commons, uh, for instance, our Creative Arts College, when they uh, have student assignments, they recommend their students to release their work under a Creative Commons license. Uh, in computer science, they recommend their students to release their code under an open license. Um, so, so a lot of different things happen on campus, but as with most urban campuses, uh, we don't find out who does what. Right? So we figure we'll do this thing where at least we can connect the dots. People are already doing what they do. It's just a mechanism of discovery. And that's where this idea came from. So we started this Commons Initiative. And uh, step two was, OK, so this will handle everything within campus. What about the upstream? How do we talk to all the stuff that we use outside of the campus? So we use a lot of Drupal. We use a lot of Moodle. Um, how do we talk to those communities and share our issues with them? and of course a lot of bug fixes and so on. So the idea of the Commons Initiative is to do both. You know, connect the dots within campus and also talk to upstream. And so part of that upstream uh, connection is to work with people on the outside and we've got Alamita Sharma who's on our board, the advisory board along with a bunch of other people. And so we um, talk to them and we say, okay, this is what we want to do. What are you doing and how can we work together? So this is, uh, this is one of the events that has come from there. Uh, you can find us at commons.sfsg.edu. So um, I hear we have a lot of interesting things today. So I'm going to get out of the way, pass it on to Alodita, and then we'll take it from there. Thank you. OK, so hi, I'm Alodita Sharma. I'm the Director of Engineering at Wikimedia Foundation. And uh, I actually had the honor of uh, participating with Samir at the Software Freedom Day celebrations uh, we do it every year. We're, uh, we've been doing uh, you know, advocacy uh, for free and open source software for many years. And uh, it really was a great opportunity since my uh, internationalization team is in town to actually pull everybody together and walk through some of the great work that we are doing at Wikipedia on building open source internationalization and localization tools for supporting multilingual websites. Um, I'd also like to welcome the change.org folks here who are actually guests of ours today attending. Uh, Patrick and everyone else, welcome. Um, I would like, first of all, to actually have uh, the, the change.org team talk a lot, little bit about how they are using translations and localization on their website to support their needs. I think it provides an interesting uh, use case on the web. Uh, and also they are looking at open source tools. So that is something that we feel that we can help on. Wikipedia, as you know, is doing a tremendous amount on our own websites. And uh, I'd like to walk a little bit through our own uh, use case after change.org has uh, presented on this. So Patrick. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, Alolita had uh, sprung this on me just a couple days ago saying, hey, by the way, can you do a 10 minute presentation? I'm like, ooh, credit. Sure. Um, just to sort of like, you know, uh, give an example of who we are and why we're here. Um, I don't know how many of you out here know who Change.org is. Other than us. <laughs> okay, so we are actually an online platform that empowers anybody anywhere at any time to join 
uh, well, actually start, join, and win campaigns about issues that they care about. Um, we would say that every month we have thousands of issues that are you know, brought to uh, the public's attention. Um, and they, we have thousands of winning campaigns every day uh, to advance change locally and globally. Uh, we, however, are unlike most advocacy groups, uh, not trying to push a particular view or point of view or standpoint or anything else. We are here actually only to give people a voice in order for them as people power to be able to try and bring about change that they feel should be, you know, seen in the world. Like the Mahatma Gandhi quote, you know, like, be the change in the world that you want to see. Um, and so, who is change.org? Well, aside from the five of us that you see here, uh, my, to introduce myself, my name is Patrick Chu. I'm the International Community Manager, uh, aka C3PO, at uh, change.org. Uh, we have our co-founder and CTO, Mark Dimas. Um, program manager, Deborah Cleaver, and two of our seminal internationalization engineers, uh, Thomas Schaefer and Eric Ogan. Um, globally, we are a total of 149 in our company. Uh, in the US, because we've started here, we are 101 people. That means we have 38 elsewhere in the world. Where are we? We are in Brazil, Argentina, the UK, Spain, France, um, we have a person located in the Netherlands, but he's actually Russian, and you know, doing this kind of work, it's a little safer not to be in Russia. Um, we have people in Germany, Italy, Turkey, India, Thailand, Indonesia, the Philippines, Japan, and Australia. So, slowly but surely, uh, we are starting to build um, our own presence in the world. We have a long way to go since Wikimedia is everywhere, right? Um, in November of last year, uh, Change.org decided that we would have to go global. And they started the internationalization process. Eric and Thomas were two of the first uh, engineers here who actually started working on taking a look at our code, which is Ruby on Rails, and trying to see what can we do to actually make our site multilingual and internationally accessible. In February, I joined Change.org and we started off with trying to integrate Spain Spanish onto our website because we had um, a merger with an, a pre-existing group uh, called Actuable and um, we started to build from there. Um, over the course of you know six, seven months that we've had here since, we have added French, well, that is France French, uh, we have made sure that we have localized for various Englishes in the UK, Canada, Australia, and India. Uh, we've added the Galo, uh, we've added Japanese, we've added Thai, Turkish, and Indonesian, uh, German and Italian as well. Portuguese, I guess? Uh, that's up and coming. So, since we have not yet gotten there, I mean, a lot of this uh, is has been kind of like uh, headcount driven just because uh, as a single person trying to manage all of this long on my own uh, C3PO can only go so far because this one actually has a human body and needs to go to sleep <laughs> so yeah and I don't plan on taking any drugs that are going to keep me awake all day long <laughs> um, but uh, up and coming we have Brazilian Portuguese we have a generic Latin American Spanish that is a little bit more formal so we don't you know uh, offend the whole of South and Central America by using the informal you all the time, um, as the Spaniards love to use. Um, we are also hitting Argentina and going to be specializing in Mexico coming up soon because there are so many social issues that are coming up that it's on fire. Um, in addition, we are going to be adding Hindi and Tamar. Uh, we are looking also at Quebecois, Arabic. We are also looking at Dutch, Basque. Catalan, Galician, um, Chinese, Hebrew, and Korean coming up. In a way down the road, we're going to hopefully be supporting the rest of the major uh, official languages in India. We're going to be tackling Northern Europe, Eastern Europe, and the Baltics at least. 
you know, just a little bit here and there. Um, so with that in mind, uh, Alolita has kind of like, I've, I've had a couple of conversations with her just sort of saying, hey, how do you guys manage, you know, as much as you do that is so global? Um, because me as a single person, I'm just kind of like, ah, it's going, it's driving me crazy. Um, at the moment, I am a single person who is managing all of our language, uh, content, translation, and everything else uh, as we go along, working with our international teams that are on the ground to provide a single consistent voice that we want to present to the world. Um, this obviously is not scalable. I cannot clone myself and make myself available in every time zone. I do want sleep. Um, so this is one of the things that I've kind of brought up with Alolita before. I'm like, hey, how are you guys doing this? I know you guys crowdsource. What's up with this? Um, and so that's how we got connected. Um, some other things that we have run into uh, as change.org in terms of our own difficulties in internationalization and localization has to do with um, you know needs that are idiosyncratic to each language or particular languages. Um, say, for instance, if we're talking about Slavic languages, we're talking about case and how you actually try and integrate that with being able to template whatever um, forms you have that come up on your screen. In addition to that, uh, number. I mean, most people think, okay, well, you know, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, we just have one something, okay? No worry about singular, plural. English, yeah, one other, no problem. Uh, we are, of course, starting to think about down the road, uh, working with other languages that are a little bit more complicated. One, dual, plural, uh, as it comes up. And many. Few, many, exactly. Um, <laughs> and of course, one of the big problems is that uh, Ruby is not necessarily the most mature uh, language to handle this yet. Um, and as such, I mean, Thomas, Eric, and I have been trying to contribute to, you know, the localization base that uh, Ruby will help hopefully provide. Um, down the road also, what else have we come up with, you know, I mean, oh, that's my son. <laughs> um, in addition, I mean, uh, I, I noticed that we're gonna, you guys are going to be talking about design also, so one of the things that we've come across as it is, is, uh, you know, Languages are not all the same length, and uh, we're running into this fun, uh, fun issue, as well as uh, thinking about not just our default left to right display on computer screens that most languages are now doing, but right to left, and then maybe way, 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 way down the road uh, when uh, support is a little bit better, you know, vertical support for languages like Mongolian, but that's way down the road. Big browser technical issues. Exactly, right. Um, so that's, that's uh, it's in the back of my head and I'm like, I don't want to think about it right now. Um, some other things that we've come across are, you know, socio-cultural appropriateness in terms of, you know, names. How do you ask for names? What order do you ask for names? You know, in, how do you display them in the end? This also then brings up for the work that we do uh, because we are trying to bring about change in society. There are particular parts of the world which it is a little less secure to have your full name displayed associated with a cause or an idea or a standpoint. Uh, so these are things that we're also taking into account. Um, definitely, if anybody has any idea, you know, like tips, guides, please bring them on, bring them on. Um, Along with that, you know, there is the issue about fonting. Uh, I'm so stoked to listen about web fonting just because uh, we've come across issues where trying to get something that is design-wise a very nice marketing, you know, display that some languages all of a sudden, oh, it, they don't quite cover the full inventory of glyphs and all of a sudden you get a really, really nice thing and <laughs> ugly. And so we have to start thinking about that as well. Um, and so, yeah, that's why we're here. We're hoping to listen to what you all have to present to us and uh, learn from you as best we can. So thank you all very much.
Thank you, Patrick. That was a really nice introduction. And uh, what I'd like to do is uh, introduce our team, Wikipedia, as well as talk a little bit about our projects, just introducing them, walk through our agenda, and then turn it over to the entire team to dig through some of the projects that we are doing and um, walk through the details. Come on. So, uh, This one? Yes. All right. This is a Mac. So, so um, today we have a very interesting presentation. We're kind of going to dig uh, wide as well as deep. Um, multilingual support on the web is a huge area, uh, and especially supporting uh, 700 languages on the web uh, is our goal. Wikipedia is an uh, ambitious little project, and uh, today we actually support 284 active languages. We are by far the largest multilingual set of websites in the world. Wikipedia has, as you know, everybody reads it, everybody, uh, some people I love to edit it, and uh, it also has a global audience, right? So. These wikis and these websites do get 18 billion page views per month. So we are one of the top five websites in the world. And we do get 500 million unique visitors every month. So it's a tr huge uh, scale in terms of the people uh, using Wikipedia world over and the number of languages that people are looking at content in, reading as well as editing. Um, the Comedia Foundation is the nonprofit organization that uh, supports Wikipedia's infrastructure uh, as well as keeps the websites running. Wikipedia's contributors and community are our users and customers whom we support and our mandate as a foundation is to make sure that they have the platforms and tools they need to be able to edit and contribute knowledge and share with each other. Um, Wikipedia is very small, the foundation is very small still. It has only about 100 employees, world over. And we have a budget of $30 million, crowdsourced, which is one donation at a time. You get about a million micro donations, about $20 or so from worldwide. And that's how we run Wikipedia. So it's, it's really, really an awesome crowdsourced Example. There's no such parallel like it today. Um, a little bit about our team. So we are the internationalization engineering team at the foundation. We actually were created last year, so we are about a year old. And uh, this is, you know, of many years of contributions from some of our community members over time, which we have been able to combinate into the foundation, like Seabrun Maslin. Nicholas, uh, Santosh, uh, Amir, uh, all of our team members, most of them are actually contributors into Wikipedia itself and have been working for many years in the community and then have joined the engineering team to be able to actually build cool tools. Um, we are a global team, that is the entire team is scattered all over the world and we were just counting today in the morning that uh, across each one of us we have a fluency of 25 major languages within the team itself. So we can rewrite, speak, you know, and, and cover a lot of the major language families within the team itself, which is pretty awesome. Um, and we develop, our primary mandate is to develop and maintain the language support tools in open source for Wikimedia websites and MediaWiki. So MediaWiki is the content management system that runs Wikipedia and the sister websites, and we're very proud to say that everything is open source. So we do maintain a top to bottom open source stack, and we care to keep the knowledge as well as the software open. The team members uh, for the team are me, Aladita, Sabrin Maslund, our product manager, Santosh Torino, one of our senior software developers, Nicholas. 
another one of our awesome software developers, Amir Aroni, software developer, Arun Ganesh, UI designer, Paul Jr., our senior UX expert as well as UI designer, and Shrikant, who has just joined, he's our QA engineer as well as uh, bug fixer and outreach uh, coordinator. So as you can see, we have a reasonably small team, uh, but a lot of energy, a lot of passion, a lot of enthusiasm on the team. We're doing some really awesome projects, and a lot of projects that will have a deep impact from the world over. So I want to talk a little bit about the program in terms of the agenda of the projects that we are going to talk about today, and then turn it over to Paul. So uh, the next project that we are talking about is a uh, significant project called the Universal Language Selector, which is basically, Paul, you want to come up? Um, the language selector for switching across 285 languages across our Wikipedia websites. And that's something that Pau and then Santosh will be presenting on. Uh, Sebron, Arun, and Nicholas will be presenting on TranslateWiki.net, and there are translation tools that we are building. And Santosh will be talking about, after that, on our jQuery I18N libraries that we are actually building out, and uh, our, um, making sure that it's available on GitHub. And then Amir will be actually digging into our input method technologies and web fonts tools um, and talking about contributions. And we will have a Q&A after that. So that's kind of our program. Paul, please. Well, thanks, Amrita, for the introduction. Um, okay. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about the Universal Language Selector. Um, but first, I want to, to make you imagine a, a scenario that may be somewhat familiar to some of, some of you if you have traveled to, to a different country. This is uh, Raka, a Indian musician that is visiting Europe and he goes to the hotel and wants to search for some, some text in his, his language, in Hindi, from the hotel public. Uh, uh, PC and it's not possible. It's not possible because he cannot uh, cannot type this uh, using his script. Even if he could find some way, maybe the, the information cannot be displayed because of the fonts. And there are there are many issues. Even if if you consider a broad project such as Wikipedia uh, for users that are multilingual and are changing from language one language to to a different one, selecting from all those uh, almost 300 languages or the 400 languages in which the software is available, it's really it presents really really hard problems. Okay, so what we try try to do to create a solution to, to some of to some of these problems to first try to to understand very well the problem from very different perspectives. And, and from a design perspective, and, uh, analyzing different different scenarios that we want to cover, explore different solutions. We have been testing them with users, and and doing different different iteratively, different rounds of uh, sketching, wireframing, prototyping, and now we are uh, already in the implementation stage. So the, some some parts of, of these projects are already available and can be can be used not only not only on, on Wikipedia related sites but on any other website that wants to, to use them. Uh, there are three three main aspects that that we we were covering to solve this kind of issues. One is language selector selection. As I said, when we are when we are <coughs> Uh, covering so many languages, a single list of languages is, is not is not enough. If we want to be to be efficient, finding the languages we, we want, there there are different tools that the, that the, the, that our team has been developing, and I want to make it easy for users to configure super for the languages. As I said, input methods, fonts, etc. And then uh, the later part is uh, how all this is integrated in different. Fantastic, different sites. The first part is is our, our solution for for selecting the language. This can be repurposed on on any any context. Basically, we have a search 
we will help us to find the language and it's quite flexible. We'll see, we'll see it. We have a list of languages where we first show common languages based on the user user location, previous choices, uh, browser configuration. So just by opening, you probably are looking for one of those languages in the most common cases. You can keep on browsing the list if, if that's not enough or you cannot write because for you, you are not able using your current computer and when you scroll this list of uh, of 400 languages we have a map that indicates where you are and goes you to, to the jam, <laughs> jam quickly. Some, some details regarding search, search uh, during testing we've seen that it's one of the most most common common ways of, of looking for a language in this, in this context. We have provided support for auto-completion allowing to search a language in a different language so I can I can search for Japanese, writing Japanese, or the Japanese language, or even the the German language, the German way of saying Japanese. Whatever it is, hello for typos. You are typing fast. You are not going for the language selector to spend your afternoon there. You are going to change the language fast. So it's probably you're making a typo. We are we are covering covering this. And for expert users. The SO code. So if you are an expert user, you can just open, type the SO code, enter, and you are done. Regarding the, the list, we are trying to, to make it easy to scan as much as we can, considering that, that is a big list with languages that are long, others are short, are different scripts. What we have done is to use a layout that uh, helps in the way it, it should be scanned. Uh, we are grouping, grouping languages by script, so you can just skip what looks like noise to you, which will make sense for other users to focus on. Yeah, so this is uh, some some ways we are we are using to to make it easy to scan in that in that particular context. Uh, and also we are integrating settings, as I said, uh, some display settings for for configuring font support for some languages that require, require uh, to provide the user options for selecting one font for displaying or other, especially in some Indic languages this is quite relevant. And also for, for input methods, following more or less the same, the same approach. We are always applying a pattern of showing the, a short list of languages trying to anticipate, as I said, based on previous <coughs> choices, GOIB, and a more button that will show this selector I showed you before. In case that I'm not looking for Spanish or Guarani, I can go to the selector and find the one. The next time, this selection will probably be there. It will become more faster. For languages, I can select the input methods, method if they are available, virtual keyboards, <coughs> any, any kind of new method that, that we can add will be added here and it's remembered. So well, if I'm if I'm changing from one language to another, and I'm in a context where I don't have, I need a virtual keyboard for one and another input method for other, or no input method helpful at all. Just by switching the languages, I get the right input method. And it has been uh, the the car the current situation. Of the, of the project is that development has been has been started. The the, the language list is is developed. It's available, and part of the display settings are developed too. And if you want to translate wiki, you can you can test it right there. You can change you can change the, the language using the selector. Wiki data uh, project is also also so interesting. And any other website can use this. Wherever you have a very long list of languages, you can just show the most relevant, indicate that there are more, and just use the selector. Like James or what? For example. So in change.org can actually totally use this, uh, you know, it's all open source. Mm -hmm. And you guys could actually do all your language selections using the studio. Yeah, as Alolita uh, commented, we, in the our team, we have a, a broad perspective of different users speaking different languages, but we wanted to, to have a, a, a complete user-centered user testing process. And, and since, the, since the first HTML prototypes to the current implementation, we have been remotely testing with, 
with users that overall spoke all these these languages from different different locations, sometimes zones in the in the world, uh, in order to try to adjust and give more prominence to the things they they we found that were made more helpful for them to, to, to find their languages, to find exceptional cases such as you know constructed users speaking constructed languages such as Brando, where are they hoping to find the language in the maps? There are there are many, many, many uh, cases that you only find uh, the impact when you are when you are testing with users actually using your, your product. And we have been doing doing this in a continuous way. And for the technical details, um, as Alurita as Alurita said, I, I was in, ch in charge uh, as, as well as with the help of Oranganes and the design issues. So Santos can can provide more detail on the technical side. Just so enough about this, just by the. <laughs> <laughs> So this is one of our translation platform where we just enabled our um, universal language selector. So I'm just going to walk through the features. So you can see it at the top here. Clicking on that, you get the universal language selector. Okay. So this is what OS is playing. So looking at the this one, uh, you can see geo IP based language selection for US because we are at US. So all the language spoken around the US region is always strong. So if I'm accessing this application from India, I'll be seeing all those 22 languages or whatever. It's uh, nearby languages. And apart from that, we are showing some previously used languages. And maybe you are from maybe uh, from India and you are using an interface with the Tamil and US. So based on the browsers or operating system language, we will show that suggestion also. So that's why this is Seabank's laptop. So Seabank is from Netherlands, you see Netherlands there. So that is based on the browser operating system. So you can see he's using this operating system in that language. So yeah, so that, that's, that's one easy way to select your language. So we give you a list of language. And this is very important for Wikimedia projects because as we explained earlier, we are working with too many languages. <laughs> A lot of them, not too many. Yeah. Yeah. Not enough. <laughs> well, so uh, either you can do a scroll on this one, you can read through all the languages. I mean, yeah, Europe region, so you can see that when you scroll, you can see the highlight changes on the map. So either you can use the map or the scroll. So scrolling down, there are too many languages. Yeah. Middle East, Africa. Asia, Asia has too many languages with lots of <coughs> in the script. Okay, so this is a big list for those who want to do actual, uh, you know, if you are not comfortable with going through all the links, they can do a very cute search, for example, for me, my mother tongue is Malayalam. So I just, just start typing something and uh, in this case, in City, I get the suggestion immediately. And uh, I can see that Malayalam is spoken in Middle East and Asia. And we are showing the uh, language names in, in, in its autonyms. But if you don't know the scripts, you just uh, point, you get it done totally. So I'm just clicking on the, let's see, internet is connected or not. It seems so. Yeah. Okay. It changed to this one, but you are experimenting, okay? And you landed it in a strange language. You want to go back, so you are seeing a tool tip here. So you have changed from Netherlands. You can click on that link and go back. So you are you are never landing in a strange language. You can always go back. So that's one thing. But if you want to do more experimenting, um, so uh, I can say. Here, for the browser again, in this little item. What? 
So uh, do you want the presentation of the browser? Command browser, tab. browser, browser. Yeah, command tab. Go there. Click here. Okay. That will work too. It's very strange, I don't know. Okay. So this is one thing. And he said about this spelling correction. So uh, my friend Nicholas is from Finland. And his name is Finnish. Okay, I typed Finnish, so it's not Finnish, it's a Finnish language, so me language. So I get the spelling correction, and I'm getting the, I'm, I'm getting the list. And if you type something nonsense, you get a no results found, or you get a suggestion again based on the GOIP. So, um, but this is the front end, but you know, speaking a bit about the technical backend, you know that we are using um, translation of language names to all other language names. So you know that if there are some thousand languages, thousand languages can be translated, language names can be translated to thousand and other language names. So we are talking about thousand into thousand language names and searching it fast. So we have a couple of algorithms to do make it fast and do the cross language search. Cross language search in the sense you can search any language name in any other language name. So got it? Uh, so that's how the use, use case for us works because people can land in wiki, they can be from any language, they want to do, type in their own script, they can navigate to any other, any other language. And we do some uh, Levenstein distance based uh, spelling corrections. Um, yeah, that's uh, basically the functionality and uh, the map can be used as an alternate uh, selection mechanism um, if you want to go by regions. <coughs> And we are integrating this language selection with the language related settings. So uh, as of now, we integrate the display settings. So this is where we integrated the web font technology with the unified interface of the language selector. So we will be talking about the web font technology and how we are using it for non-aesthetical purpose, uh, like uh, using it for the non-Latin languages a bit later. But for now, this is going to be the interface. So you can see my interface is in Malayalam, and um, I can always choose the fonts, either the sister fonts or uh, the other fonts. Or again, if you are one, if you want to choose something else, you can go to language selector, go back again, all those features. So basically, that's it. But one important thing is this all works on MediaWiki, so as you know. But we know that language selection is not a problem only for us. We know that it's a problem for all multilingual websites. So from the beginning itself, we made sure that if we are developing this tool, this tool will be applicable, available as an open source component for all other applications. Okay. So whatever you are seeing is either here is very very loosely coupled with the media wiki, all you are seeing is just a pure jQuery plugin. And uh, we just released all our source code in our GitHub. This is our public open source repository. So you can always go to github.com, Wikimedia. This is one thing you need to check out always if you are looking at uh, other than the free knowledge repository, what we are working as a free software development community. So you can see all our projects, and if you want to use this jQuery ULS component, Universal Language Selector, just go here, fork it, grow it, use it. Contribute it back. Yeah, contribute it back. It's a um, plain jQuery, not, no dependencies, nothing. You can use it in, as you said, you, you, your application was in the Proven Rails, so you can just plug it and use it. So, uh, UX included, language repository included, user testing <coughs> included, everything included. Just that use. Well, hmm, no, let me see. Documentation included. Documentation included. Very good. Yeah, Okay. So, if anybody interested in knowing the technical design details and technical specification and algorithm details, this is all you are. Or just go to MediaWiki.org and search for Universal Language Selector if it is uh, difficult to remember. Google Mouse. Yeah. So 
URL to remember jQuery ULS at Wikimedia GitHub repository. Thanks, Santosh Pak. And uh, next, we are going to dig into our translation tools, localization, so Cebra. Um, this is also still your slide, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you I, want to yeah, dig yeah, into jQuery? Yeah, I can do it. Okay, fine. So Santosh continues. And then Cebra. <laughs> well, internationalization, a bit too bit lengthy word to say. So we usually use IATN. So anybody here who don't not familiar with these terms, IATN and LTN, for those who don't know, I'll explain. Internationalization and localization are closely related uh, software design process. Uh, internationalization means making your software product working on all other languages, ready for all other languages. Okay, so it's the first stage. Once your software product is internationalized, you can adapt it to your languages. So that process of adapting basically can be localizing, that means translating the interface strings, all those things. It's called localization. Since this internationalization, localization is tough to pronounce. We just uh, use some acronyms. Um, uh, I, 18, N. I and some 18 letters plus N and L plus some 10 letters and N, so localization. So that's two concepts you need to know. So uh, in our talk, we might be switching between internationalization or just INTN, okay? Um, internationalization is required for all other applications who wants to reach to audience beyond English, right? English is the default language for software. Uh, but if you want to reach multilingual community, internationalization is must. And internationalization, uh, to, to make sure that, so uh, as you know, all the Wikimedia projects are available for 284 languages. And we have spent lots of effort, resources, and time to understand this problem and solve this problem. Uh, and uh, we recently started a project codenamed as Project Milkshake. Milkshake. Okay. So the aim is, uh, we learned a lot about internationalization and we built a lot of software internationalization components. But we wanted to make sure that these components are given back to the open source community as reusable software components. So that anybody who wants to internationalize their web applications can just plug the application, just, just like the uh, universal language selector. So uh, under this project in Milkshake, we have a couple of projects. So one of the projects is an internationalization library. So by internationalization library, we mean a messaging framework. That means you have translations in the backend. Uh, based on the language of the selection, you just uh, take it from the background and from the server <coughs> and uh, show the interface in your selected language. And that includes <coughs> dynamic templating, or placeholder <coughs> replacement, all those stuff and uh, for dynamic numbers and all we know that plural is tough to do if we are uh, doing some manual number comparison and all but we are not doing that we are using the CLDR plural standard and we have a parser for that standard CLDR plural term and by that we support all the all the languages that is supported by CLDR we support it in the library and it's a, it's a data driven uh, plural support and uh, uh, this this is already present in media wiki we are just making sure making sure that it's available for everybody as a reusable so that's about the plural and we have gender so whenever we address people usernames so he in english he will become she okay and for neutral it will become they but um, this is very easy uh, for you know english but for many languages, it's a bit complex because verbs also change based on the, uh, like uh, Hindi and all. Um, the sentence syntax itself will change based on the actor, rather based on the gender of the actor. So we, we, we just reuse the gender support from the media wiki and we release it as open source components in the jQuery i18n library. We call it as jQuery.i18n library. It is available again in GitHub. I'll be demonstrating some of the pictures. Um, that is one thing, and a bit of grammar support. Grammar support means um, 
a verb can be inflected, inflected in the sense it, based on the grammar, adjective, all other forms it can come based on the structure. So that kind of replacement also we support. And again, as he, uh, he said, number support, um, a digit transformation. So Hindi digits can come, Arabic numbers can come. Okay. And in the future, we will have date time. Yeah, and yeah, we are trying to support date, um, date uh, time, time zone and date uh, formatting. Again, the decimal point, you know, uh, for decimal places we use dot, the period. Sometimes it can be comma for some length. So, 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 so that also we support. Again, it's a jQuery based pure jQuery label can be plugged anywhere, open source component, dual license, MIT and uh, GPL license. For it, improve it, use it, and it's uh, documented. Uh, just to show a small demo, just a small demo uh, about this one. It doesn't cover all the features, uh, but for folks who to understand what exactly it is, so usually we will be creating this uh, interface messages based on the context of the website. So I have a username, uh, Mira, and uh, I have another user. So that is female and male user and has a variable number of kitten kittens. So that's why I gave S yes in the smash. And he or she loves to play with it or them, right? So to form this interface message dynamically in all the languages, not limited to English, it's very tough. You need to use the programming logic to that. But we avoid all these hassles. It's just a uh, uh, dynamic change. So you can see that with the one, Mira has one kitten. She loves to play with it. Let's change it to two. Okay, so you can see kittens. She loves to play with them. Okay. And the number replaced. Yeah, so the number got replaced. So let's change this to Maria. So you can see in many multilingual websites to change the language, you need to refresh it. Here it is not there, it's a live update of the interface messages. Okay, so here also it's uh, uh, syntactically correct based on the plural grammar rules. So let's switch back again to English and let's see, this is gender. So it's uh, Hari, now it should be here. So this is very uh, uh, a limited with demo with the English and uh, my mother tongue Malayalam, but it's uh, available for all the languages. Basically, all the languages supported in CLDR. It counts around the 700, and out of that, around 300 as percent in our media wiki projects. So this is a small demo. We are going to come up with a very <coughs> large demo because we just uh, finished the uh, uh, development of this jQuery 18 and library, and again, by URL to remember, Wikimedia Foundation GitHub repository, go to jQuery 18 documentation, testing. So if there is any questions about this uh, jQuery 18, uh, we have a Q&A session, so we will be handling it there. Yeah. I guess Amir, since Amir is going to dig into web fonts, and then we'll dig into localization. Hi. Um, so, web fonts. Uh, so most people in the world, uh, as strange as it may sound, don't write in the Latin alphabet. Uh, that's uh, just just count. Uh, India has completely different alphabets. China has completely different alphabets. Uh, the Middle East has completely different alphabets, etc. And most people in the world live there. Uh, however, uh, computers—you you can only count on computers to support the Latin alphabet well. 
and not even that, uh, you, because some countries like Vietnam, like Lithuania, and many others, they have various extensions to the Latin alphabet, uh, which are not supported well everywhere, uh, not to mention uh, weird alphabets in India, weird to you, but very simple to people who live there. Um, it is possible to install fonts manually on computers. The fact is that most people don't actually do it. Uh, again, it's very strange, but that's the fact. Uh, if you go to India, um, where a lot of people know English, um, I don't know, out of a uh, um, billion and four hundred thousand people who live in India, only about 200 million actually know English. Uh, uh, the rest don't know English and they, they write in their own alphabets. Nevertheless, uh, it's relatively rare to find a computer in India that out of the box supports the local alphabets. Uh, and a lot of people in India don't actually install the fonts to be able to read their own languages on computers. Uh, but we want to make it easy for them to read information anyway, because we do have uh, editions of Wikipedia in these languages, uh, and if they can't see the font, get, they cannot see the letters, um, that's uh, showstopper, they cannot read anything. That's why we use the web font technology. Uh, the idea is uh, very simple. Uh, much like the, the browser can load images from the server and show them, or load videos from the, from the server and show them, uh, it is possible for a few years already for a browser to load a font file uh, from the server and show it. It was actually used uh, mostly for design purposes to, to make uh, various companies in the uh, uh, USA and France and Germany use nicer fonts uh, for better corporate identity or something. Uh, it was almost never used. Mm, yeah, it was almost never used for for the actual purpose of uh, letting people read in their language. Uh, and we started doing it very large scale. Wikipedia is a very large website uh, with millions of users. Um, we, what we basically did, uh, we loaded, uh, currently it's 44 fonts, we, we are adding more fonts all the time. Uh, the idea is not so much to make the website beautiful, but to make, but to make the website readable. Uh, we are adding languages, people are requesting new languages all the time, and we are adding this, uh, it's quite simple. Um, we are in, on Wikipedia we only use freely licensed fonts, because the software is free and uh, the fonts are licensed under free licenses too. Um, you can use it on your website. Uh, the first version of web fonts was a pretty strongly coupled to MediaWiki software which runs Wikipedia. Uh, we are now developing a new version. It's, it's practically ready. It's already on GitHub. You can use it. You can just put it on your website and it will... Uh, it already includes all the fonts that we use. You can add more fonts of your own. Uh, basically adds mm, web font support to a lot of languages without your readers having to download these fonts and install them manually. Um, configurable, etc., etc. Um, here it is on GitHub, uh, pluggable into any website. Uh, if you can design fonts for even for Latin or for any other language, please talk to us because we want to enhance and improve our fonts, open fonts repository all the time. Uh, please talk to us if you have any friends who are designers who love to design and improve fonts uh, play with commas and diacritics and stuff like that please let them talk to us they can contribute a lot uh, Titles, that's also myself okay. uh, so one thing, one thing is to read, that's what fonts are for. Uh, another thing is to write. Uh, Wikipedia, and I'll speak about that later, uh, Wikipedia is a website which is very strongly dependent on people writing themselves. Uh, people must be able to search the website, which is a very basic thing. If you cannot search and type in the search box, then you cannot find any pages. 
um, Wikipedia is written by the readers, uh, so if uh, the people cannot write, there will be no new pages created. However, uh, again, um, all computers in the world come with a Latin keyboard, uh, not all computers in the world come with the right localized keyboard. So a, a basic thing as typing in your own language is not something that you can take for granted uh, pretty much anywhere. Uh, that's why we use uh, web technologies, uh, it's almost completely JavaScript, uh, to simply transliterate from Latin to the local languages. We support quite a lot of languages already. Uh, if, you, if you go to India, uh, you, you will speak to people. There will be, many of them will be very surprised that it's possible to type in their language on the computer. A lot of people think that it's only possible to do it in English. Um, <coughs> so, we support a lot of uh, standard keyboards, which are standard government promoted standards in their countries. We also support other keyboards. Uh, if people say, for some languages, people say, yes, we have that government standard, but people don't like it because it's not convenient. A lot of people use some other standard that a bunch of volunteers developed, and it's very convenient. We support that too. We are, again, we are, as with webcons, we are adding support for more languages and more. Um, keyboard layouts all the time. If you know of some language that, that you want to type or you have some friends who, who complain that they cannot type in their language, it's easy, very easy to enhance this to new languages. Uh, again, as with web fonts, it was uh, until recently strongly coupled to MediaWiki and now it became um, a component, jQuery IME, uh, IM is input method. Uh, and it can be usable on any website, but any About website. Five weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, yes. Thanks, Amir. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. Um, my name is Hilo Maasland. I'm product manager localization at the Wikimedia Foundation. I'm also a community manager at TranslateWiki.net. I'm a long-time Wikipedia <coughs> volunteer and uh, a language uh, aficionado. Oh my god, like, these are a lot of languages, but there are actually only a few. There's about 7,500 <coughs> classified languages in the world, and these are some 350 of them that we have actual translators for at TranslateWiki.net. Not everyone comes every day or even every week, or even every month. But over the past few years, we've had, had seen people in these countries. And as you can see here, I, they even have scripts that I cannot display on my computer. I have no idea what scripts these are, but we've had people translate in it. And we have Wikipedia content in it. Webfonts solve that, but for these things, we haven't had uh, Webfonts yet. Our aim is to facilitate and support software localization in all classified languages. Uh, we have more than 4,000 registered translators. We have translators in, in 300 or so languages. Uh, we currently support about 20 open source products. Uh, Change.org could be one of those. If you guys are, have an open platform, uh, I think we would love to have you. I think we would be a very nice match. Let's talk about that later. Uh, we do Media Wiki, we do OpenStreetMap, we do Encyclopedia of Life, we do Status Nets, which you may know from Identica, we do Mantis BT, Fuck Forum, Free Call, which is a game. Um, everything that has a future, at least in my view or in Nicholas' view, uh, we will have. Um, uh, we, we want to um, be close to the development community of the, of the other party. We're not just a party where you outsource your localization. Uh, if we are committing, we are we are actually committing and we want the other side to commit to. We want to have an active dialogue between developers and localization facilitators so that we can make life easy for translators because that is our most valuable resource. They are putting in their volunteer time to help our cause. So we crowdsource, uh, we use all kinds of social media uh, talks like these. Uh, we have uh, users of the Wikimedia wikis as, uh, as, as, as our um, um, uh, as, as grounds where we can uh, recruit new translators, we use blogs. Um, 
uh, our, uh, uh, our culture is that we assume good faith. Uh, everyone who comes into the wiki and who manages to, to come into the wiki uh, and, and ask for access, uh, we give access liberally. Uh, we develop to the user's needs. Uh, our user is the most important thing. We don't really care about the backend or the effort that uh, uh, people, uh, that developers of a product have to make to include their internationalization, for example. We see that a lot of localization platforms cater to the developer and not to the translator. We think the translator is much more important than the developer. Uh, we do commun community building in a wiki. Uh, we have few formal processes. We're mostly a duocracy or meritocracy or whatever you like to call it. Uh, we have a lot of tools that Nicholas will, will touch on. Uh, and we have multiple contribution methods, uh, mostly online, but we also facilitate offline processes uh, using GetText, uh, which is, uh, is used a lot, and which is, at least in my opinion, a less than optimal way of localizing uh, software. It's also a feature set that really doesn't work well. Um, I just want to share one of the things we have found uh, incentivizing users uh, has wonderful results. Uh, we have, um, so our platform is, um, it doesn't have a formal entity, it's loosely related to the Wikimedia Foundation, basically because we work there, Nicholas and I, but there's no foundation behind it. There's, we have a few sponsors, like Wikimedia Netherlands, the, the Dutch chapter of the Wikimedia Foundation sponsors us with 2,000 um, euros a year, so we can put that back into the community. Uh, we have Wikia, uh, which is a big wiki farm, uh, that sponsors us uh, for uh, another thousand bucks uh, a year. Um, and, and we also work with their extensions to, to localize those. Um, but like pledging a thousand dollars to be shared along, uh, among everyone who makes 500 translations within nine days gives us actually, a, a, a quadruples our traffic during those nine days. Um, so here you see our regular traffic is about between two and three thousand translations a day uh, on the first day of our last translation rally, as we call that event. It went up to over 18,000 contributions on one day, then it goes down a little and reaches like a plateau of around 9,000. Uh, and then when it's over, it drops back down. So if we can get a little bit more money in there, I think we can get that up. So we need more sponsors. Uh, at the moment, we do this like two, three times a year. Um, I see ways, especially like alternating the format a bit to, to do this every month, and I think after that. Uh, it's the, the model, so if you we support different kinds of translation platforms, like text and protection and some of these and lots of others, and also different types of content, so if you translate digital a bit to software based translation. At Wikimedia, we translate full spaces, uh, monthly highlights, and at user based at KDR, we translate software documentation. And if something is not supported, not a problem, if you have a problem, why not write a PHP class? Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, we are making it accessible. Yeah, web APIs, so that you can watch all the translation statistics for your software or whatever website, or for the translations. Or well, if you really want, you can even put your own translation space on top of the core system. And uh, we are making more and more functionality available. More and more functionality is being available in the APIs, and we are writing documentation uh, during the coming months and next year. And we also have lots of scripts to automate the management of translation into version control systems, which is used by software products, so by a few scripts we can easily export uh, all of the supported projects in translate All of the translations to the version control system have come and I should give me messages out of it. Which is important because it's me, SIP and a few other guys at translate.net. Uh, it has to be time efficient because 
Um, and transfers and proof. Um, there are lots of different ways to help the translator uh, to make them better transfers and faster. In this example, you can see from the top, it starts with transfers from memory. The transfer extension comes built in with the transfers from memory. And you can also use any other transfer site as source of transfers from memory for also solar backend which scales more apart. And also machine translation service, which of Bing, Aperium, we used to have Google, but it's not free anymore. And it's easy to have more. But it's quite hard to find service which is both free and it's stable you know. And one of the very important points is message documentation. And it's very flexible. You can have comments, images, links, whatever is needed. And it's the place where the software developers have the big chance to actually have good translation, good translations by giving hints to the translator. What is the actual context? Is this a button? Is this a link? Is the page title, or whatever? And not visible here is some automated checks, like missing parameters, in the HTML, and if you update it, why you have the translation. And very small button, a simple feature, as present, is the way for translators to connect with others in the community and with the software developers or whatever is interesting. Um, yeah, I think this is for you, Amir. Um, so to sum things up, uh, we were talking about the technologies uh, that we are developing. Um, now what can you actually do about this? How many of you are programmers, coders, developers? Ah, too few. Learn. <laughs> Buy a book. Uh, <laughs> related in any way to developing websites, managing websites? Working with websites, um, uh, have friends who do that. <laughs> um, if you have friends who do it. Um, so, this is really that everybody can do, absolutely everybody. Everybody reads Wikipedia. Wikipedia pops up in almost all Google searches. Uh, a lot of people will read Wikipedia without admitting it. Um, <laughs> the, 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 there's actual academic research about that. Um, the people who write Wikipedia are you, all of you. Uh, the developers to listen to the translators and to fix the issues. Um, if you are developing websites, use our tools. Um, the, the main thing that we get from this is that the localization of other websites on the internet becomes better. We love good localization, not just on our websites, but on other websites too. Uh, you can report technical problems uh, with our website. Our, again, our website is Wikipedia. Uh, there is this website called Bugzilla. Uh, if you find any kind of a technical issue, technical problem, something that you find hard to do, something that doesn't work, something that is slow, something that is not displayed correctly, uh, go here, uh, file a bug report. You just write a few words that describe your problem save it and uh, it gets filed in our system and we will fix it someday. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it will take a day, maybe it will take a year, but someday it will be fixed. You can influence us, you have the power, that's one of the overlooked uh, advantages of open source software. Uh, and you can code, uh, you can improve our software yourself because it is open source. Um, the languages that we use the most are PHP and JavaScript. Some bits here and there are in other languages too. Uh, everything is in uh, Git. The core, core media wiki uh, has its own Git repository. Uh, some of our tools that our team develops are there. Some other tools are in GitHub. Um, it's, if, you, if you 
know how to code, it's quite easy to just close the repository and start making improvements. Uh, that's about it. There are many ways to contact us uh, through the website, uh, through IRC. Um, we are hiring too. Um, the office is here down the street in Montgomery. Uh, or you can work from the Netherlands, from Israel, from Finland, from Spain or India. Everything is possible. Even Russia. Uh, that's about it. Uh, I think we have a yes. Q&A session now. Yes. So, um, um, if you wanted to do a longer Q&A session, but we do have about 10 minutes. When do, we, do we have to leave at 6? Uh, there's a class here at 6.30. So okay, so we have a little bit of buffer, uh, but we do, you know, would love to have your questions. And uh, again, please feel free to question any of us. So you guys, do you want to come up here and uh, answer? Let's there? start a dialogue. <laughs> yeah, or turn your chairs. <laughs> yeah, let's turn the chairs around. Yeah. And uh, we do have nice Wikipedia buttons and stickers here. So if any of you guys a, want. One more of our colleagues, uh, Ryan Caldari. And Ryan Caldari, <laughs> another one of our engineers. Uh, so very passionate about yeah, it. Yeah, stickers, buttons. Yeah, go ahead. I, I love everything I see. Um, the first thing that comes to mind, though, is what about mobile? Where you don't have all the information about the energy system and resources. Obviously, you've got to do it for the desktop first. Uh, so, so I guess some has recently written a memo about this, which is not that public. What happened to that memo? Well, um, is... <laughs> <laughs> I guess we're going to publish it really soon now, because there has been enough chance for it. Yes. I can talk a bit about mobile. Um, mobile is a bit tough if we are talking about the complex scripts, um, the Indian scripts. So, uh, uh, rendering that their commerce scripts in mobile phones was it is a tough job and until uh, uh, last year it was nearly impossible but recently in a few uh, uh, mobile operating systems notably Android started supporting all the uh, rendering stack the rendering stack for stack of, stack of the Indic languages and almost all it covers almost all uh, languages but the problem is uh, those phones doesn't ship with the uh, phones, okay? Uh, but uh, the native browsers or other browsers in the mobile phone supports the phones technology, um, and uh, we plan to provide the phones technology in our mobile version also. Uh, only few things you need to take care of because um, mobile phones, if you are uh, sending phones, phones from the server, it should be optimally compressed. Uh, and um, you should be aware of the phone formats it, it, it varies across the browsers. Right? So depending on the operating system, it can be EOT format, raw format, prototype format, or object format. So what we are doing is, uh, depending on, uh, we, we, we keep all the compressed, optimally compressed uh, fonts for all the scripts. Uh, if, if you ask, uh, you know, for many Indian languages, the font size are very big because of the large amount of glyphs we need to support. So we do it. Um, Compression up to the raw format or EOT format, and we do optimize that uh, compression. And we use some open source tools released by Google that, that they use in Google Performance Technology. And uh, so, if you take care of all these things nowadays, it's possible to do uh, rendering on mobile phones. Only condition is the operating system should support, unless otherwise, we cannot do much. Uh, a very um, complex workaround for this is server side rendering. Uh, that is supported by the Opera browser nowadays, and it got a very big market because of that, but it's in <coughs> Congress and not optimized with the network bandwidth. The next question is, mobile is usually a little bit as well. Yeah. Yeah. So in our mobile strategy, we're also, for example, using technologies like USSD, which is uh, Basically, it's PIP over carrier pigeon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then exchange the carrier pigeon for text messaging, and then we've got it. Um, and, and especially in Africa, uh, uh, those technologies are, are turning out to be relatively successful. Uh, and we have an initiative called Wikipedia Zero, 
uh, in which we have uh, engaged in alliances with mobile operators and uh, persuade them to uh, uh, give uh, their subscribers access to Wikipedia uh, uh, over, over their data uh, platforms uh, at zero cost. Uh, and we have uh, a lot of, we're getting a lot of worldwide uh, coverage at the moment, deals with Vodafone, with Orange, uh, and, and various other uh, operators uh, uh, in the world. That doesn't see on the rest of the um, no, it, no, it doesn't. No. But, what, what but at least are, your Wikipedia article can be well, yes, <laughs> But I mean, what, what we are doing though is that, you know, all the different components that we are developing and the best practices that we are establishing in terms of optimizing any kind of font technology for mobile, we will pu publish and make right. available. So that's something that is completely reusable. We are also pushing a lot of uh, bug fi uh, fix requests to different open source projects upstream and working closely with uh, Android, uh, the Android team and the Firefox OS team and other uh, mobile platforms, if you will, to be able to make uh, the font support ubiquitous for a larger number of languages. So because bandwidth keeps increasing and yep. technology, so every nine to 12 months the problem uh, it's cut in half. So. Because there's a lot of fundamental work that needs to happen at the platform. There's, it's not enough to, as an application to just you know kind of put in patches or solutions that work at our layer. So that's something that we are continuing and will continue to push. Especially on mobile, a lot of things, like for a lot of older mobile technology, it's, it's, it is just impossible. Mm -hmm. It's just undoable. Yeah. And you have to wait until the technology is refreshed, uh, and, and everyone and all the old stuff has been cycled out, and then you can uh, penetrate further. Yep. Yeah, go. Okay, cool. I have a, uh, a couple questions. Um, ah, no one, because we yeah. have questions in the back. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay, well, it's hard to pick. Uh, <laughs> so we, we, we well, we need dinner yeah, and stuff, yeah. so maybe we can like. Okay, so. Um, I would say the, the number one complaint that we get from our extra from our translators is context. Um, you know, they get this string, and in a couple places, it um, you know we use start as a button, but start could also be just like a header, and they would have two. In the English, it's the same, but they're different in different languages, so they don't know where the context is. Um, and I, I saw that you have this image here. Um, on this tool, um, this is like this yeah, so is, yeah, I, no, I'm here uh, I, I, I'll, I'll explain this. Uh, we call it in a very simple term message documentation. So every message is the piece in English that you are translating to another language. And yes, translators very much need the context. Uh, what is this? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying oh, yeah. to find some cute um, stats. So. Uh, Basically, for uh, what we are, we are very strongly encouraging the developers of the code. Mm, okay, never mind. Uh, the developers of the code for each new software interface message that they add to add the, the, the piece of documentation, no matter how long. Sometimes the longer the better. Uh, to explain to the translator what that message does, uh, especially for short messages like open can be open the file, or the file is open, mm -hmm. uh, etc. There are several other possible translations. Um, meanings. Uh, the way we do it is quite simple. The documentation message is itself stored as a translation uh, to a pseudo language. Uh, we, we give it the, the language called QQQ, um, which, is a, which is an ISO code for for a language that doesn't exist. Uh, and it just explain what it is. So can we show, show something? That, that, that image that was there earlier it was very good, actually. Yeah, this one? Yeah, perfect. So, <laughs> yeah, this one, perfect. Um, so, this is the This is the best case scenario, <laughs> by the way. Uh, someone took the effort to make a screenshot, put it in the right place. Usually it's just a bunch of text, but that's like, already a hundred times better than nothing at all. Yeah. So basically, this is the message that must be translated from English. This is the place where you translate it to your language. 
And this big thing here, information about message, that's where the documentation appears. Uh, this itself is stored as a translation to language key to Q. So this is in language EN English. This is in language FI Finnish. This is uh, in the same table stored as language QQQ. And this explains to the translators how to translate this message. Uh, we have a button here where the translators themselves can improve the documentation. This contribute button, they can improve it by themselves. Anyone That's can contribute. Like if you're a developer, you could be a volunteer reading code, even if you can't contribute to the code in, in this platform, you can document and help other translators out. Because we have noticed, like, there's nothing worse, right, than like having a translation in 50 languages and having 20 translators ask the same question. Having it answered once, putting it in here, saves 19 questions. That is the concept. We, we, and, we, we, and it's even better if you do it when you're developing, the question doesn't get answered. So we, we, encourage, we encourage contribution, uh, we make it easy to contribute to anything. We encourage collaboration between the translators and the developers, and between translators and other translators, uh, as much as possible. Is this the interface that the translator is using? Yes. Okay. It's, it's being redesigned now by uh, Arun and Paul, but this is currently the interface. Back to the yeah, well, that kind of led to the question that I had, which is how do you handle colloquialisms? Colloquialisms? Yeah, I mean, how do you handle faster than a speeding bullet? How do you yeah. trans, you know, how does it so deal in, 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 in it's interfaces it's semantics, we, I guess. In interfaces, we discourage uh, colloquialisms. Yeah. Because we think they don't work for translations, they confuse translators. Uh, however, in texts, they are un almost unavoidable because they add some uh, yeah, some flavor and, 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 and make things less formal. Um, uh, but you could explain that. You could add like in, you can add, you can add links here. Uh, like there is a description uh, of the sayings that are used here, or this is what faster than a speeding bullet means uh, translated in, in the context of your own language or, uh, 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 or, or put your la like literal meaning of, 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 of that colloquialism there so that someone at least has the opportunity to, uh, to, to properly uh, translate uh, it in context. Is that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any more questions? Oh, just to follow up, that, so you say that if you were to add links to that, that mean you would have multiple choices. So the reader, the reader yeah. or the person would have to figure out which one did they mean. Um, Type no, no, if I'm correct. Well, yeah, you should, try you should try to keep this consistent. But uh, yeah. it's it's more like so the contents of of uh, of this area is wiki text, yeah. which means you can add images, links, uh, bullet lists. Uh, everything that, that that media wiki allows you to do uh, you need to curate it uh, in, in, in a way so that it doesn't add to the confusion that resolves any confusion um, I wanted to answer a little bit about the um, colloquialism thing when we've had some of that a lot of it is that it's large bodies of text that need to be translated and, and we've done two things to assist in that is that we've used more generic like strings than the actual text to be the translations. You know, we'll say this is kind of where this goes, um, and so they can choose to change it. And so when it, when it changes in English, that doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be changed as well in other languages. Um, another thing is to put it in a completely separate like content management system um, and let let them the translators just manage that in, independently of our our system. Um, but I, I also have another question. Um, which something that has like come to like bite us a couple times is when we use terms that are in English the same that then eventually in some language it doesn't work out that those two things mean the same thing um, and we have to go back and then like change and add separations to that uh, you know, the exact so thing with this what it basically means you are reusing strings in multiple locations yeah and that is discouraged that's discouraged yes. yes. Okay. Duplication is a good thing in localization because it allows you to choose the right context over and over and over instead of 
having the wrong context and user confusion at some point. Yeah. Okay, that's, 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 yeah, so that's that's definitely yeah, it's definitely don't. So mm -hmm. so do 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 uh, duplicate. Don't reuse. Do replicate. The question there? So there is no final version of any translation that anybody can contribute again and again and again if they want. That is our concept, yes. Yes, that, that is fine. Uh, it's what it's like Wikipedia, continuous improvement. Yeah, because what it does is it tunes the engine, right? It, it improves it continuously. Do you have more or Yeah, there are reviewers on Translating. Um. <laughs> 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 In, 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 uh, no, so no, no. Like, like Wikipedia, we have volunteers. Uh, we have arbitrators. If you want to look yeah. at it like that, if something gets out of hand, uh, I or someone else can step in and say, "Hey guys, uh, something's got to change here. Um, Behave. This can't go on. You, you fix this, or I remove you." That's happened six times in the past five years. So it's rare. We, we assume good faith uh, and it works, as strange as it may sound. People come and people usually write things that are useful to other people and almost nobody complains. It's, it's very, very rare. It, it's a, one of the most uh, frequent uh, sayings about Wikipedia is that it is Wikipedia and uh, all the universe around it. It's, it's something that cannot work in theory, but does work in practice. <laughs> exactly. Cool. More questions? That, that example that you had with the kittens, yeah. um, and the changing the gender and then it or them, it, I, I know that was like a very small example, but are there rules sitting behind that? I mean, when you change to the female name, like how yeah, does so it? That, that's exactly our gender system, <coughs> plural system. So um, for plural itself, it's very, very complex. As you know, it's the only two plural forms in English, but you have five or six plural forms in Russian, and uh, about five in Arabic. So th those are um, rules, actually, actual rules written yeah. in standards. So we just implement that uh, rule system. For example, if I if I if I have an Arabic number four, it can be the fourth form of the plural, right? Singular plural is first and second form in English. Like that, the, there will be first, second, third, fourth forms. So yeah, here this is the standard defined by the Unicode and CLD transcription. So you can see a number, a number, uh, an Arabic uh, two is n is two. And it is a few form if n more hundred between. Yeah, that, that's the mathematical uh, formulation of that plural rule. Right? Yeah. So we implement, we pass these rules and we implement that based on the numbers. For this language, for this rule, we find out what's the actual plural form for that number. Where do you want to go? You're, you're translating yeah. on the fly then. Yeah, yeah, on the fly, all these rules for all languages. This, this language is lovely because it has a special plural form for the number 92. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and with, our soft, with our software, uh, you just get it. Uh, it's it, not it, completely it magical, works. though. The developer has to, do, has to encode uh, some information in the strings about which words need to be affected by the gender or which yes. words need to be affected by the plural. Okay. Yeah, so, so you, would, you would put like special markup in your message saying like this word is affected by gender or this is affected by something. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to understand is, so there you have this utility that does translation on the fly, but then there's also translators, you have translators that hard code, I guess oh, hard code, code like the translation. Code. Yeah, so there are two things. One is the static text, yeah. translator text, and in the tra translator text itself, we, in most of the cases, we will have to apply dynamic changes based on the context we are working. So it can be, you are doing some search for few, something, and you get, uh, we need to display a message. There is no search result. There are one. There is one search result. There are two search result, right? So depending on the context or the okay. working context, you need to change the interface message. Okay. And uh, okay. so that's more for like the interface. Yeah, okay. for, for the interface. So content and is more static. So, yeah. yeah, the basic okay. content is static, okay. and uh, for 
content that changes dynamically based on context. It is <coughs> user, gender. So if you are a user, so you can see, go to the history, history of the editing page. So she changed, she edited this article, he edited this article, depending on the gender of the user. So uh, gender is optional in MediaWiki, you can mention your... I was wondering, like, how do you know the Yeah, gender? yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to specify it, okay. otherwise we use the neutral gender, okay. if it is present. Can you give like the example of, of, on that page of the API call? For yeah, so that's, that's that just what we have it here. Basically what the translator does, the translator has to write both forms, uh, the, the singular and the plural. If, if in that language there are more than two forms, then he has to write more than two forms. So this is a translation to Filipino, I think, to, to the down. Yeah. So there's a, this special word here, which is plural. And this is the singular form, and this is the plural form. And the software picks the right form according to the number that appears oh. in context. So he asked about the API, how we do this things. So it's uh, very easy, and I'm just going, if anybody has is allergic to the source code, don't look at it. Command, you read. Okay, that's it. So, um, so you can see the message, uh, dollar one has the magic words, plural of the context, gender allows to play with plural dollar two, it, the. So based on the dollar two, it changed to it or the, and the API is basically dollar dot IAT enough for our text. It's a simple API, dollar dot IAT, and you can add to some, say, underscore. But the translators. It's past us, but there are, you know, when you pull out the. The, the bar, sex bar, and pass in as the variable. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the message. These are the parameters. Person, person, the person name, kittens, and the this gender. Yeah. And these are all come from the user yeah. interface. So this, this framework is very flexible because usually you only have one parameter right. that right. Can, yeah. can, can do something. But if you have like a sentence that contains multiple numbers, like you have uploaded, uh, you've made uh, uh, 15 changes to pages, uploaded three images, and deleted whatever, then with this framework you can have pluralizers on all of the three varieties. And just, 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 just uh, not to scare you, translators don't have to deal with this. Yeah. Translators yeah. only <laughs> translate to their language. This is just for the programmers. Uh, there's and usually one programmer and 300 translators. <laughs> and this, this code is also not required. Uh, this for the demo it has. And uh, this library can work without JavaScript. That means you need to add data attributes to the HTML nodes. So it on the fly based on the message data key attributes in the HTML elements. It can do the translation on the fly based on the language. So the, the question that I had is that you're, you're generalizing the, the pronouns but not the verb. I assume that's just because it's a demo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so how would you... If you have maximum flexibility, you can okay. do it different in every language, yeah. just as long as the parameters ah, are right, in okay. the right place. Got it. Got it. So every language has yeah. its own has its translations. Own yes. yeah. Got it. That's, that's the part of it. Yeah. Yeah. How do you deal with exceptions? Mm, what exceptions? Exceptions. Each language has own exception, exception rule. So you don't want to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contribution yeah exactly. Of, so... Um, what we try to encourage people who know the language well uh, to write good translations. Uh, if there is some limitation in the software that doesn't allow them to uh, translate to their language correctly and comfortably, uh, we very strongly encourage them to report this to us so we can fix it. If, if, it's, if it's impossible, if there's some grammatical form that for some technical reasons uh, they are not able to write, uh, it's a bug that we have to fix. And we encourage people to report it. And does, does that answer the question? Yeah, uh, I, I think... I was wondering if you improve uh, all, all the time you add something to the code. But then uh, yeah, this happens all the time. Yeah, so uh, it's, uh, it, it happens in media key also. For example, if we handle the grammar rules and all the uh, many, you know, like grammar rules are not complete, it has exceptions. So if you're talking about that kind of exceptions, right? Not based on the plural and for some words there are exceptions, all those things. So uh, we, 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 we have seen these things in EFK for a long time and 
uh, whatever the, it is not according to the standards or performs, we all, always have our own uh, custom logic that overrides that one. And whatever we accumulated over the past years about these exceptions and special rules, uh, that's not in, even in the standard, we have our own overrides. That is also included in the library. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> So We're yes. Never done. <laughs> 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 more questions? Any more questions? I have one more. So we, have about, we have about five minutes left. Yeah. You, you mentioned, I saw that with keyboards. Yeah. Um, so the mapping <coughs> switches from language to language? Because I know like the local keyboard can yes. be very yes. different. Yes. Yes. Okay. So maybe the same time is same and, and there are multiple mappings for any language. So some people will prefer one-to-one -one key map, some pe people will prefer phonetic, uh, phonetic key maps. Like, uh, transliteration. Phonetic uh, key maps? Yeah. yeah. Some, some people will uh, prefer transliteration based key maps. So there are different types of key maps that people use and are used Just to. Just showing a few examples from, yeah. from, from Google here. I just enter uh, keyboard layouts and um, in Yo. fact, some folks are even used to the old so typewriter a, uh, key maps, yep. yeah. which so could be totally different from layout. the digital key maps. Uh, but even even the, the keyboard that you uh, usually see, like the QWERTY, uh, in Belgium they have QWERTS, yeah, uh, they have the ZERTY, and in Germany they have QWERTS. Right, it's different. different. Exactly. It's Different everywhere. So I couldn't find the hat button. I'm like, where is it? Yes. And, exactly. and, you know, <laughs> and that's so, so these input tools can even be used to give you back your English keyboard. As long as you don't look as at the keys. As long as you know where the As long as you button. don't look at the keys. Right. <laughs> and, and the, and the, You'll do it right. um, the key thing is that, you know, the reason why we are in investing so much into on screen key maps and, the, you know, key maps specifically is because. Uh, for the longest time, if you look at any of the keyboards that have been designed, they have been very specifically designed over time for Latin-based languages and more recent times Oriental, uh, Chinese, or Japanese-based languages, right? So there is a whole uh, set of families of languages, for example, Indic, or for example, you know, Cyrillic, in, uh, which have very poor to zero support on key maps or keyboards. And for the longest time people have tried to, you know, combine different characters to have an overlay on top of a Latin keyboard to be able to use those languages. So when you are designing and doing key maps for the digital, for the tablet, or for the mobile, or for the browser, you can actually, for the first time, really have key maps which are supporting all those different languages which have never really had key maps on the physical keyboard. So that's, that's the power. And, and really taking that feedback and input from users who have actually been using those languages and mapping that back into and making that available is a huge effort. So, so for languages in which we have a one-to-one -one mapping to a, to a Latin keyboard, we can uh, uh, we have a, a prototype at the moment for on-screen on -screen keyboards. At the moment, it only works with Indic in, uh, InScript uh, keyboard uh, mappings. Uh, but, so you can actually uh, have an on-screen keyboard. This is Cortana. Uh, it's, it's a, this is a dark launched feature at the moment. Uh, but uh, so, so you can see here that this works, and at the same time you can. Like I'm typing on my Latin keyboard, I'm talking, I'm, I'm typing in Tamil. So and I'm, this is, this could be also. Sorry, that, is it Tamil? Yes. Why? Okay, my it's, it's okay. It's <laughs> ah, okay. Yep. So it's tra it's it's browser <coughs> hardware as well as you can have a virtual. Yes. 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 Huh. Is it now? Is so it now? you know, as you go into touch. This thing. Yeah, this is it's the completely <laughs> changing the paradigm of the interface that you're using. Yeah. And we Sorry, she don't mapping. think you're seeing this. Uh, <laughs> for about the 60 keyboard mappings that are present in our repository, uh, we developed the 60 key maps. And it, that count is increasing every day because yeah. community is contributing 
keyboard mappings from all other languages. We just keep on adding it. I don't know. I don't know how this. I'm just kind of because that's hardware. So are you? A we just you have access to the driver? Doesn't matter. It's magic. It works. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we I mean, I can understand virtual, but if, it's, if you're affecting the hardware, it's, 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 it's some Sometimes she's actually a Jedi. He uses the boss. <laughs> so this is something that we cannot explain in two minutes. But if you have the time, really, you're welcome to talk to us and we'll explain how it works. Stickers so, and stuff. Yes. Oh, uh, no, that's um, nice to make it. Sure. I've got some We're business cards for whoever needs to leave. If you want to contact us, please do.